Good day, fellow artists. We're going to start something new today, and because we're going to start something new, that means we're going to start off at the beginning. Put our first things first, start with a little elements of art and principles of design, as well as a couple of other vocabulary words that we need to review for what we're going to be doing. So let's start with our elements of art. Please repeat these words after me. Line, shape, color, texture, form, value, and space. So in this drawing, we're going to start off with some lines. We will use those lines to create shape. We will use that special line called the horizon line to help us create some space. Now remember that with a horizon line, that line goes all the way across and everything above that line is the sky. Everything below that line is the ground so that we never have that gap of white space between ground and sky. It should all run together. Once we have everything drawn and laid out, we're going to use some color again to help us fill and use our space. And we're going to talk a little bit about value. Now, in this case, we're going to be trying to keep all of our values similar, close to the same because of the artists that we're looking at. So that being said, let's move on to our next topic of conversation. That being, of course, our principles of design. So again, please repeat these seven words after me. Balance, unity, pattern, rhythm, movement, emphasis, contrast. So here we're going to have our so we're going to create ourselves an emphasis within this drawing that we're going to create. Um, we're going to try to create some balance. We'll talk about that as we get to our color. That'll come after the drawing when we're ready to move into color. So that being said, we got a couple of vocabulary words we want to touch on real quick, and then we'll get into the drawing. So two words. One of them we already mentioned. We're just going to mention it again to make sure it's fresh in our minds, and that is this word, horizon line. And that shows, shows us where the ground stops and the sky starts so that we never have that gap of white paper between the two. We are going to be creating a landscape today, so proper use of that horizon line is going to be really, really important. Um, and with creating that, that, uh, that landscape, this word right here, perspective, this illusion, this set of rules that we follow to help create distance and depth in our artwork. So with perspective, a couple of words that go with that being background, middle ground, and foreground. And each of these words comes with its own part of the rule. So in the background, things are far away from us. Because they are far away from us, we draw them small and we color them with a light, spelled that wrong, light value. Things in the middle ground are, as you may have guessed, in the middle. Because they're in the middle ground and they're in the middle, we make them, we draw them a medium size and we use a mid-tone value. So a mid-tone value is kind of like just the normal pressure that you would color or draw with. Not too hard, not too light, right in the middle, just right. It's that, it's that Goldilocks value. And then that brings us to foreground. Things in the foreground are close to us. And because they are close to us, we draw them big. And because they're close to us, and because we've drawn them big, when we color them, we use a dark value. Because as those things get closer to us, their color becomes more saturated, more vibrant, 
as they move away from us, those colors desaturate or become more dull and dim and less bright and vibrant. So that being said, let's go ahead and move into the drawing. So here we have a blank piece of drawing paper. Now, if you don't have a blank piece of drawing paper, you use whatever you've got. But as, as with anything we create, the first decision that we need to make and discuss is the orientation of our paper. Now, there are two options for this. There is portrait, when our paper is straight up and down in front of us. And there is landscape, when our paper is across in front of us. Because we're going to draw a landscape, we want to keep our papers in landscape. Now, Paul Gauguin spent a lot of his time in the tropics, the island of Fiji and that part of the world where it is very warm and the sun is very bright. It's kind of close to the equator, so the quality of light there is much brighter, which causes a lot of the colors that he saw to be brighter than they might be elsewhere in the world. Now that does not mean that he always chose to use supremely realistic colors. We see a lot of kind of outlandish colors used in Gauguin's paintings. So what we want to do here is we want to start off with establishing our horizon line. That's that line that's going to come across the page, separate the ground from the sky. It is best for this drawing if our horizon line is somewhere between the middle and the top of the paper. I'm going to use a straight line for mine. You do not have to use a straight line. But one thing we do want to make sure that we do is that we, when we draw this horizon line, we want to make sure that we make it super, super, super light. Because we're, we may need to go back and erase parts of it later. And if we make the lines very, very dark, that is incredibly difficult to do. So we want to start, we've got our horizon line now, and we want to start from the background and work our way up. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the background here, and we're going to draw just a little island somewhere. You choose. You pick. You pick where you want your, your little island to be, and you make your little island look however you want. But keep in mind, we want it to touch the horizon line, and we want it to be small because it's in the background, and that means that it's, eh, it's far away from us. So let's see here, I'm gonna put, I think I want some mountains on my island, maybe. Mountainous island. Maybe I just let my island go right off the edge of the page. Maybe you don't let yours go off the edge of the page. However you do it, that's fine. It's up to you, it's your island, it's your background. You, as the artist, get to make these decisions for yourself. You know, I might add, I might even add a second little island there. But still drawing very, very lightly because I, I want to be able to go back and make changes if I'm not happy with something later. So that establishes a background, something that's far away from us. We still need some middle ground and we still need some foreground. So what we want to do here is we want to create some land. So right now we got island and we got ocean. We need some more land. So what I want you to do, or what I'm going to do rather, is I'm going to come across here, and I'm going to come across here. Now you don't have to set yours up this way, but what I'm doing is I'm creating two pieces of land. One that is going to be my middle ground, one that is going to be my foreground. And we'll, next step is gonna to be to put some stuff on these islands. So from here, our next play is to put some stuff on this back piece of land, on this middle ground piece. So remember that when we do that, we wanna draw things a medium size, not too big, not too small. Now back here, you can add whatever you want, but I have some minimums. I want you to add at least four trees, and then at least one other thing of your choosing. And that could be a house, a hut, uh, a boat, it could be anything you want. But add at least four trees, at least one other thing, and then whatever else you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, pause your videos, you know, so you're not just seeing mine and copying it. And then we'll come back in just a few seconds. So here I've got my four trees, 
I made palm trees because it's tropical. I got a bush, and then I got a little uh, boat. This has a name, but that name has eluded me. Um, but there's something else I want to show y'all. So sometimes, especially when stuff is in the middle ground and the background, it's far away from us. We want to make a lot of trees, but we don't necessarily want to draw a thousand trees one by one. So there is a way that we can create a lot of trees without a lot of work. So I want to show you guys that real quick. So what we do there is we start and we, instead of drawing each tree one at a time, like I've done here, we draw all the trees at the same time. So we start with the canopy, which is the top part of the trees, and we just make a shape, you know, however you want to do it. There's no, you know, every tree is different, so there's not really an exactly right or wrong way to go about doing this. We want to create this kind of large shape for the canopy. After that, we're just going to bring some lines down. Making sure we don't go too big with anything. You know, we have some that are closed, some that are further back into the, the thicket, as the case may be. And this way, we are creating a large number of trees. We're creating kind of a forest look without having to take the time to draw every single tree. Because honestly, that's just unnecessary sometimes. So that being done, we're going to move ahead into our foreground. Now down here in your foreground, again, I want you to add at least four trees. Now with these trees, remember, foreground means they're close to us, so we need to draw them really big, which means chances are we're probably going to overlap some of this other stuff and need to go back and erase it. That's okay. So down here, four trees, really big, and I want you to add one, at least one animal to this part. So go ahead, pause the video, add your trees, add your animal, and then we'll come back and take a look in just a second. Okay, so here I've got my trees, I got a bush, and for my animal, I chose to add a person. Because technically, we as people are animals. Now, one thing that I didn't do yet that I wanted to wait and show you guys was how to clean this up. So we've got some lines that we don't need. So we just wanna take our eraser and go inside of these trees and these other shapes and just clear them out. Empty, empty them out. Get all these extra parts that we don't need anymore. And this, this is why we draw lightly in the beginning so that we can clean things up without having a bunch of stuff get in our way. And as we work from the background to the foreground, we create this depth, we create this space so that we see, and we re when we look at it, we read it as these things being close to us and then these things being a little bit farther away, and then these islands back here in the distance being very, very far away from us. Now our next step is an optional step and then a mandatory step. So at this point, if you want to go into this and add any more details to it, add more people or animals or whatever, you can do that. Take a few minutes, add whatever you want. Just make sure that we're following the rules. Foreground, make it big. Middle ground, make it medium. Background, make it small. After that, though, the next step for everybody is going to be to outline it. Gauguin and his artwork was a big fan of a heavy, dark outline. We see that in a lot of his work, so we want to emulate that ourselves in our work. Bear in mind that when we outline something, we're not coloring anything, and we're not adding anything new. We're just tracing over the top of our existing lines. Now I'm going to use a Sharpie to do this. If you don't have a Sharpie, a regular Crayola black marker. Um, this is one of the thin ones, but if you have these types of markers, these work just fine for this. Also, a black crayon is always a, always a good choice. The only thing I don't want you to use, do not use these Expo markers to outline things. These are not made to be used on paper. They're made to be used on a dry erase board and then wiped away very easily, which means that if you use this on your paper, it'll smear and it'll ruin all your hard work. We don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead, take a moment, get this thing outlined, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about our colors. Okay, so with that outlining done, we're ready to start in on our color. Now with the color, we want to keep in mind that Gauguin and his artwork did not always use super realistic colors. Uh, so we, in ours, 
do not have to use super realistic colors. Now, one thing that we do want to pay attention to is maintaining our values where they need to be. So for example, in the background back here, we want to make sure we keep that value nice and light because those, those islands back there, those are far away from us. When we move into our middle ground, we want to make sure that we keep our values at a mid-tone. You know, not too dark, not too light. It's kind of in the middle. And then we want to make sure that when we move into our foreground, the part that's closest to us, that we keep those, make those values nice and dark. Nice and dark values. All right, so that being said, we're, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to dive into this, uh, get my space filled with all my colors and values, and we'll come back and we'll take a look and we'll talk about it here when we're done. And here we have our finished drawing. Now, a couple things that I want to point out to you, and then I've got one thing that I want to demonstrate for you. Um, first off, again, bear in mind, not really choosing and using the most realistic of colors. Now, some of my colors are, you know, so I have some green in my ground, but I also have a lot of these other colors, like oranges and purples and reds that we don't normally see or think of when we go to color something like the ground. Also, I've used my values, and we can see that pretty clearly here. So I've got these super, super, super light values on these islands that are showing in my background. Then I come to this part of the land and it gets a little bit darker, comes up to that mid-tone value. And then on this part that's in the foreground that's very, very close to us, I've really, really kind of pressed down super hard to make these colors, these colors and values as dark as I possibly can. Now, the other thing that I want to demonstrate and talk about for a second is the direction that we color. In situations where we're using a lot of the same colors, like for example here and here, I'm using the same group of colors. Um, now I have, we have used the value to differentiate those to, so that we can tell them apart, but we can also control the way that we color, the way, the direction that we move our crayon to help separate those two things. So for example, I have a Small little mock-up here. Now, I'm not going to go into as much detail. I just want you to see. So, if I'm going to do this one, I color with this, and I move across that piece all in the same direction. It would be, and this would be a part of the mid-ground, mid-middle ground. So, I use that mid-tone value. Okay. And now here, same thing, same color. But I'm going to change two things. I'm going to change and darken my value, and I'm going to change the direction that I color. So instead of going this way, I'm going to come this way. Because when we color, that direction that we color, it shows up. People can see that. So if people can see it, and if people are going to notice it anyways, we might as well use it to our advantage. We might as well make it work for us as an artist to help add to our piece and to help clarify the piece of artwork that we're creating. And then the same goes for something like the sky, for example. Like when I go to do the sky, if we look at mine here, I'm coloring just straight across the page. So the same same thing would apply there. And then we come. And this is I'm not gonna color as neatly as you guys would, because I'm just trying to show you a point. Now with your sky also notice that the part of the sky that's touching the horizon line, that's the farthest away. So that's the lightest value. And as it moves up the page and gets closer to the top of the page, that value gets darker. But again, controlling the direction of my crayon in order to help establish where everything is, where everything's going, and to help separate things so that even if I'm using the same colors, it doesn't look like the same object. It looks like a separate piece of the picture. 
that, my friends, is our our journey into Go Gant. Good luck to you. Can't wait to see how these come out. As always, my friends, happy arting.